When you hear the word Italian, what comes to mind? Perhaps Roman emperors, Renaissance artists, or ancient cities like Venice, Florence, and Rome. But what if we told you that the people of Italy, long thought to be descendants of a single unified heritage, are actually one of the most genetically diverse populations in Europe? Modern genetic science has revealed something extraordinary. There is no such thing as a typical Italian genome. Instead, Italy is a patchwork of ancient migrations, cultural fusions, and unexpected ancestry. Beneath the surface of pasta, passion, and piazzas lies a story written in DNA, a story that challenges the traditional idea of what it means to be Italian. This isn't just about history, it's about identity. For centuries, historians and nationalists tried to paint a picture of Italy as a singular, unified cultural and ethnic entity. But the truth is more complex and far more fascinating. From the mysterious Etruscans and the seafaring Greeks to the empire-building Romans and the invading Goths, Italy has been home to nearly every major civilization in Europe and the Mediterranean. Now, thanks to breakthroughs in ancient DNA research, we can trace the footsteps of these peoples, not just through ruins and artifacts, but through the very genes of modern Italians. What scientists have found is both shocking and enlightening. This is the story of how ancient farmers, Middle Eastern traders, African soldiers, and Balkan warriors all contributed to the genetic tapestry of Italy. It's a story that spans 10,000 years and continues to evolve to this day. Welcome to a journey that may change everything you thought you knew about Italians. Long before the Roman Empire rose to dominate the ancient world, Italy was already a land of diverse peoples and cultures. Two of the most intriguing groups that shaped the early genetic and cultural landscape were the Neolithic farmers, who arrived from the Near East, and the enigmatic Etruscans, a civilization still wrapped in mystery. The first major population shift in Italy came around 8,000 years ago, during the Neolithic Revolution. Early farmers migrated from Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, across the Mediterranean and into the Italian peninsula, bringing agriculture, pottery, and domesticated animals. Genetic studies confirmed that these early agriculturalists left a major mark on the Italian gene pool, particularly in central and southern regions. Their DNA blended with that of local hunter-gatherers, forming a distinct ancestral layer still present in modern Italians. Then came the Etruscans, who flourished in central Italy, especially in what is now Tuscany, between the 8th and 3rd centuries BCE. Unlike their contemporaries, the Etruscans developed a highly urbanized society with advanced art, metallurgy, and writing. But where they came from has been a subject of debate for centuries. Ancient Greek historians believed they originated in Anatolia, while others thought they were indigenous. Recent genetic analyses of Etruscan remains have delivered a surprising twist. Their DNA appears remarkably similar to surrounding Italic populations. This suggests they were not foreign invaders, but rather a culturally unique offshoot of earlier Italic peoples who adopted distinctive customs and language. In short, the Etruscans were exotic in culture, but not in genetics. Interestingly, these early Italic peoples, farmers, Etruscans, and others, set the genetic foundation of modern Italians. Their genomes lacked any significant steppe ancestry, which would later arrive with Indo-European migrations. Instead, their DNA reflects a Mediterranean basin community that had deep roots stretching back to the first farmers and possibly even to Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. What's clear is that even before Rome, Italy was a place of mixing, innovation, and identity-making. The Etruscans, with their unique cultural fingerprint and familiar genes, are a perfect symbol of this ancient blend. They remind us that long before imperial expansion and Latinization, the Italian peninsula was already home to a rich and complex human story, one still etched in the DNA of its modern inhabitants. At its height, the Roman Empire stretched across three continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa, bringing together an immense diversity of peoples, cultures, and genes. Rome was not just a political powerhouse, it was a biological melting pot. And modern genetic studies are now revealing just how deeply that mixing shaped the DNA of ancient and modern Italians. Ancient DNA from Roman-era burial sites, especially in and around Rome itself, 
paints a vivid picture of a cosmopolitan capital. The early Roman Republic population was largely descended from local Italic tribes, with a genetic profile dominated by Neolithic farmers and some steppe ancestry, introduced through Indo-European speaking groups such as the Latins and Sabines. However, as Rome expanded, so did its gene pool. By the imperial period, 1st to 3rd century CE, the population of Rome had undergone a dramatic transformation. Genetic evidence shows a significant influx of people from the Eastern Mediterranean and the Near East. Individuals from modern-day Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, Greece, and even North Africa settled in the capital and its provinces. Many came as soldiers, merchants, slaves, and administrators, integrated through conquest, trade, and migration. The DNA of these migrants mixed into the Roman populace, fundamentally altering the genetic landscape. This period of intense genetic blending reflects Rome's open and dynamic nature. Unlike other ancient civilizations, Rome didn't rely solely on rigid ethnic identities. Instead, being Roman was as much a cultural and legal status as it was a matter of ancestry. As a result, Rome absorbed people from across the empire and, in turn, reshaped their identities politically, culturally, and genetically. Interestingly, genetic signatures from this imperial mix still echo in modern Italians, especially those in central and southern Italy. The Mediterranean influence, blending local Levantine and North African ancestries, is a lasting legacy of Roman openness to diversity. What we're left with is a profound realization. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was Italian DNA. The empire's power wasn't just in its armies or architecture. It lay in its ability to absorb, adapt, and integrate. The Roman genome, like its society, was a tapestry of the ancient world, woven together by trade routes, conquests, and human stories stretching across empires. When the Western Roman Empire began to collapse in the 5th century CE, waves of so-called barbarian tribes swept into the Italian peninsula. These were not disorganized hordes, but structured Germanic societies, Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Vandals, Lombards, each leaving their mark not only on history, but in the genetic fabric of Italy. The Lombards, in particular, had a lasting presence. Arriving in 568 CE, they established a powerful kingdom in northern and central Italy that lasted for over two centuries. Modern DNA studies show that in regions once ruled by the Lombards, especially in Lombardy and parts of Tuscany. There's a detectable trace of northern and central European ancestry not present in earlier Roman populations. These genetic signals are consistent with the profiles of Germanic peoples who originated in areas around modern-day Scandinavia and Germany. However, while these Germanic groups brought new genetic material, their overall contribution to the Italian gene pool was modest compared to earlier influences from the Mediterranean and the East. Most of the population remained rooted in the older, mixed ancestry of the Roman era. Yet in specific areas, especially in northern Italy, the legacy of these invasions can still be measured genetically. Beyond the DNA, the cultural and linguistic influence of these groups was notable. They introduced new legal systems, place names, and aristocratic traditions that lingered even after their political dominance faded. What the genetics reveal is a story more nuanced than destruction or replacement. The barbarian invasions were also a period of blending and transition. These Germanic newcomers didn't erase Roman Italy. They integrated into it, leaving behind a subtle but lasting imprint. As Italy moved toward the medieval era, its population carried the echoes of not just the empire that was, but of the tribes that helped reshape it. While northern Italy absorbed Germanic influences, the south experienced a very different set of migrations, ones that would deeply shape its genetic and cultural profile. The region became a crossroads for eastern Mediterranean and North African powers, each leaving lasting legacies in the population's DNA. The earliest major southern shift came with the Greek colonists during the 8th to 5th centuries BCE. Settling in coastal areas of Calabria, Basilicata, and Sicily, these Greeks founded what would become known as Magna Graecia. Genetic studies show a strong Aegean signal in these regions, distinct from the central and northern Italian gene pool. 
After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire reasserted control over parts of southern Italy. Byzantines brought further Eastern Mediterranean influence, including Anatolian and Levantine ancestry. Archaeological evidence and genetics aligned to suggest this wasn't just administrative rule. It involved population movements that contributed to a more cosmopolitan southern identity. In the 9th century, Arab and Berber forces from North Africa conquered parts of Sicily and southern Italy. Their rule brought Islamic culture, architecture, and, significantly, genes. Modern DNA studies show a minor but detectable North African and Near Eastern signal in parts of Sicily and Calabria, linking back to this era period. Finally, in the 11th century, Norman adventurers from northern France seized control of Sicily and southern mainland Italy. Despite their northern European origins, their genetic impact appears to have been limited, perhaps due to small numbers and swift assimilation. Together, these layers of migration turned southern Italy into one of Europe's most genetically and culturally diverse regions. Unlike the relatively homogenous north, the South became a mosaic of Greek, Arab, Byzantine, and Norman threads, creating a rich and complex identity that endures to this day. Italy's stunning cultural diversity is mirrored in its genetics. One of the most striking revelations for modern DNA studies is the deep genetic divide between northern and southern Italians, a difference shaped by thousands of years of distinct migrations, empires, and trade networks. Northern Italy, bordered by the Alps and closer to Central Europe, shares stronger genetic affinities with populations in France, Switzerland, and Austria. This reflects the historical influence of Celtic tribes, Roman colonists, and later Germanic groups, such as the Lombards and Goths. Over centuries, trade and intermarriage across the Alpine corridor further blurred the boundaries between Northern Italians and their Central European neighbors. In contrast, southern Italy, especially regions like Sicily, Calabria, and Apulia, shows elevated genetic signals from the eastern Mediterranean and North Africa. This aligns with the known historical waves of Greek colonization, Byzantine administration, Arab conquest, and later Norman rule. The result is a richer mix of ancestries, including Levantine, Aegean, and even minor North African components. Central Italy, including regions like Tuscany and Lazio, home to Rome, serves as a genetic bridge between these two extremes. Its DNA carries both the northern and southern markers, reflecting its role as the administrative and cultural heart of ancient and medieval Italy. The genetic north-south divide is not just a historical artifact. It continues to influence health, culture, and identity today. Yet, despite regional distinctions, Italians across the peninsula remain part of a shared genetic heritage rooted in the ancient Italic peoples and enriched by layers of Mediterranean and European migrations. In this diversity lies the true story of Italy, not as a monolith, but as a patchwork of interconnected peoples shaped by geography and history into one of the world's most fascinating genetic landscapes. Italy's genetic mosaic is enriched by two historically marginalized but culturally resilient communities, the Jews and the Romani. Though small in number, both groups have left a lasting imprint on the genetic and cultural landscape of the Italian peninsula. Jewish communities have lived in Italy for over 2,000 years, with records dating back to the Roman Republic. These populations, including the Italcum, Sephardim, and later Ashkenazim, contributed unique Middle Eastern and European genetic signatures. Recent DNA analyses show that Italian Jews preserve a strong Levantine genetic core, supporting oral and historical traditions of ancient migration from the Near East. Yet, centuries of life in Italy also led to admixture with local populations, particularly in Rome, Livorno, and Venice. The result is a subtle but distinct genetic footprint, neither fully native nor foreign that links Italian Jews to both their ancient homeland and their adopted one. The Romani people, who arrived in Europe from the Indian subcontinent around 1,000 years ago, reached Italy by the 15th century. Genetic studies confirm South Asian ancestry in Romani populations, alongside significant European admixture acquired during centuries of migration. In Italy, 
Romani genetic profiles vary by region and community, but they retain clear traces of their ancestral roots. Despite facing discrimination and forced assimilation, the Romani have maintained cultural and genetic continuity, often living in close-knit groups that preserved linguistic and ancestral heritage. Though historically segregated, both the Jewish and Romani populations in Italy represent living links to wider global diasporas. Their DNA tells stories of survival, adaptation, and quiet influence. In the broader picture of Italian genetics, these threads highlight how even small communities can contribute to a nation's complexity, reminding us that identity is rarely singular and never static. Between the late 19th and mid-20th centuries, more than 25 million Italians left their homeland in one of the largest voluntary migrations in modern history. Driven by poverty, political upheaval, and the search for opportunity, they scattered across the globe, settling in the Americas, Australia, parts of Europe, and even North Africa. This exodus transformed not only the countries they entered, but also helped carry Italian genes, languages, and cultural practices across continents. Modern genetic studies have begun to trace this diaspora in remarkable ways. DNA databases in Argentina, Brazil, the United States, and Canada, for instance, show measurable Italian ancestry in large segments of the population. In some areas, particularly in South America, Italian ancestry rivals, or even surpasses that of Spanish or Portuguese settlers. Whole regions like Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, or New York's Little Italy bear the legacy in their genetic code as much as in food and street names. What's more fascinating is how Italian emigrants contributed to the genetic diversity of their new homes. Intermarriage with local populations produced hybrid lineages that still carry detectable markers of Italian regional ancestry. Whether from Sicily, Campania, Veneto, or Calabria, each group brought distinct genetic profiles shaped by centuries of interaction with Greeks, Arabs, Normans, and others. The Italian diaspora serves as a genetic mirror, reflecting both the unity and diversity of Italy itself. It also underscores a broader truth in human genetics. Our histories don't stay locked in one place. They travel. They evolve. And in doing so, they weave new patterns of identity in distant lands. Today, descendants of Italian migrants are rediscovering their roots through DNA testing, forging personal connections with ancestral villages. In this sense, Italy's genetic legacy is no longer confined to its borders. It has truly become global. Italian DNA tells a story of complexity, contradiction, and connection. Far from being genetically uniform, Italians are one of the most diverse populations in Europe, shaped by thousands of years of migration, invasion, trade, and cultural exchange. From the Celtic influences in the North to the Greek, Arab, and North African traces in the South, Italy's genome is a living map of its layered history. This diversity challenges the idea of a single, fixed Italian identity. Instead, it highlights a spectrum, regional, historical, and genetic, that defines what it means to be Italian. Whether through Roman soldiers mingling with foreign recruits, medieval traders intermarrying with Easterners, or modern immigrants adding new threads to the national fabric, Italian identity has always been in motion. DNA reveals not division, but connection. It shows how shared ancestry runs beneath regional rivalries and cultural distinctions. And as more Italians and Italian descendants explore their genetic roots, many are discovering surprising lineages that broaden their sense of belonging. Ultimately, Italian DNA tells us that identity is not just about where you're from, but about the many paths that brought you there. It's not purity, 